TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, June edition, with your hosts Pablo Gunner, Marvin Goof, The Ambassador, and we are here to talk nerdy to you about all the nerdy stuff, or as much of the nerdy stuff that we could check out for the month of Junio, right? Which is going to include Acolyte first and foremost, The Boys, Star Trek Discovery, Doctor Who, Black Clover, Baki Hanwha vs. Kenga Ashuran, Sweet Tooth Season 3, Ultraman wow, Rising, Inside Out 2, Kaiju Number 8, House of the Dragon, My Adventures with Superman, and then if we have enough time, some Xbox Showcase and Nintendo Direct. Let's get into the Acolyte. So, the Acolyte. It's, this is going to be a deep dive. We're doing the deep dive Acolyte, okay? <laughs> so, who wants to take the reins? Well, since I'm kind of the middleman here, <laughs> we're refereeing this whole thing. Let's just start with plot stuff. What you would either of you feel, plot-wise, this actually feels like if it's cohesive, if it's bad. What, what, what would you say the plot feels like? I feel it's just the bunch they just played darts one day just threw a whole bunch of ideas on the dartboard and whatever hit put it together in some shape or form without much effort pablo um i mean i it's it's hard because it's for the first two i mean to where we've gotten up to episode four i feel like it's pretty solid and i i feel like and i'm hoping it's only going to improve from here i hope from what we've seen will not be like episode the end of episode four was the climax and then when it's not going to get better than that but i hope that's just the tip of the iceberg hopefully and it shouldn't go up from there so we'll see but for me i just feel like this this was going to be hard from the get-go because of the fact that you have your old school fans right you have your you have your og fans original trilogy you have your legends fans which is not considered by canon from Disney. And guess what? It's not considered canon by Lucas either. He has said the b books, all that extra stuff, it's not canon. He said, my movies are the only thing that's canon, which for him at the time was the OG, the prequels, and then I think some of Clone Wars, at least the, the Clone Wars movie, which I thought was horrible, but... And Clone Wars itself, like, first se season was was pretty weak, but then, you know, progressively got better. But the point is, that's how, so it's, and then even, like, KOTOR, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because that's the future, kind of, right? And then the past with KOTOR and all that stuff, it's not that old because it's High Republic era. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I have not read the High Republic books or comics, so I cannot speak to how good those are or bad they are. Um, I've, I've read other people's stuff and they're like, yeah, it's not bad. It's good. So they know some of these characters. They have a good feel for them already. And so those people, I feel like they go, yeah, they got a good handle on these characters um, for the people that know the characters that are in there that are in the other High Republic stuff. But for me, I go, your fan base is, it's not really there. You kind of have to create it because you have old school fans and new school fans and no one's really into this High Republic era. So you kind of have to somewhat start from the ground up in a sense, even though it's Star Wars, right? So it's like, yeah, people are going to check it out because it's Star Wars. But there's also going to be that heat. This is awful! Somebody stop them! Do something! Good. Let the hate flow through you. You're not helping! Coming from it, right? You have old school, new school. So, that's the biggest struggle, and I think that's been the biggest struggle the whole time from the get-go, because it's like... I mean, even for me, I go like, I don't care about any of these people because I don't know any of them, and I don't know if they're in anything else, but that's part of your struggle in something new, is creating that care. Whereas, like, Ahsoka, I'm in because of Clone Wars and Rebels. Like, I'm already sold. Mm -hmm. And then with each episode, I was like, you're giving me everything I want. Like, this is just getting better, right? <laughs> so that already had me. Same thing with, like, Bad Batch, right? Like, that's just continuation of Clone Wars. And since I ended up loving Clone Wars, it's going to be a win for me, right? Like, it's going to be an easy thing for me. This is going to be an uphill struggle from the get-go, and it has been, obviously, to a crazy, insane degree, because people 
Are people review bombing it, or are they? Is it legitimately bad? That is one of the things that is kind of a. I feel like I would a say it's there. legitimately yeah. bad because the the problem with the case people are making with review bombing is, oh, they are new accounts, but look at everything else that's reviewed. A lot of times, people will go and make accounts when they reviews, feel compelled. When they feel compelled, if it's really good or really bad. So to make that as your argument that it's being review bombed is a little ridiculous. I mean, it's not ridiculous when it's proven because people are accidentally reviewing something else that's called Ac just Acolyte or Acolytes. They're review bombing those with reviews. And you can tell because the description is clearly them watching the Acolyte. And so I don't know if some of the people are even watching it if they're just trashing it because it's new stuff. Because... We know people that that trash it, that don't watch it, or they're just like, oh, because it's Disney Star Wars, it's garbage. And as far as I'm concerned, I think there's more better Disney Star Wars than there is old school Star Wars. Because, I mean, if you even look back to the to people go like, oh, plot holes, like the, it's not like the original is unfallible. You know what I mean? Like, it has its issues. I mean, think about it. You have Luke who's crying over his master that he's known for a few hours, maybe? A, a few days at most? I don't know the time frame specifically. <laughs> but then she, but then you have Princess Leia who pretty much saves the day almost, right? Mm -hmm. To these two guys that are like, we don't know what to do. Her planet was destroyed. And she's like, it's okay, Luke. It's okay. <laughs> and it's like, really? You know, like, just like, I are mean, the met, whole... Are you talking about Obi-Wan or the whole Yoda? Thing, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Well, Obi-Wan is someone he's known most of his life. It's just the old hermit that he likes and visits. Mm -hmm. It's not just he didn't meet him for a few days. It was someone he knew. It's still hard to compare one person that's a hermit that you know to a whole planet of people and be well, like, which one's more sad? Right. <laughs> you know, like, right. who should we be crying for right now? Yeah, if we're gonna, like, well, I mean, even with I, her, I get she's going to be mourning for the people she knows. Not, not the whole planet, because you're going to be sad about the whole planet, but you're going to be mourning, like, what's going to hurt is all the people you know. I, I'm just saying, like, family there's... Family and friends. The, the original doesn't go without its issues. It's not a perfect thing, so I don't know why people are acting like it's a perfect thing. It, it has goofy stuff, like, even the... I mean, you can you can go to, like, oh, when he gets his arm cut off and there's blood, and you're like... <laughs> yeah, but we know that it's hot, and it doesn't create blood, like... But it's just, hey, that's that was the times. It was, yeah, there's camp. And I don't understand how we can't be like, can just move forward and be like, yeah, this can, and you can tell that this is different, right? Like, this is its own thing. It's obviously doing something different. And to me, the different is part of its weakness and strength at the same time because of the fact that you're going, okay, we're not even doing lightsaber fighting. That's what people want to see. Well, that's about to happen, it feels like. Yeah. So... <laughs> While we're while we're in the middle of this, speaking of different, let's talk about characters, mm -hmm. and in that case, how these characters are being treated. Like, how do you feel the Jedi are? Are they even worth talking about? Are they different, in your opinion? I mean, most of them are pretty bland and boring. Uh, the only, the only one that the ones that really the only one that really sticks out is Soul. Which is such a cop out of a name. It's like, hmm, we have a Korean guy. Hmm, what's the capital of South Korea? Seoul. There you go. That's his name, Seoul. I think that's really cool. I, I personally go like, that's really Are cool. You, really, five years ago, if they would have released something with a Chinese guy and called him Beijing, it would be universally panned and hated. Well, Pablo, what do you think? I mean, I agree with that last statement, yeah, but uh, but I still think it's cool. They spelled it different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, they stole Spanish and Portuguese word for the sun. Right, yeah. So, so for me, I feel like, okay, so 
Soul, I like him. Yeah, he he. The thing is, he's he's taking a lot of notes from Qui Gon. You you see that, you sense it, and I like it. I I, I like his vibe. Th there's that other character. Uh, I forget her name. Vernestra, I think her name is. Mm -hmm. And you can tell she's a very political Jedi. And I go, I don't like you because you're so politically focused and you care more about helping people. Because it's like you could have gotten to Kelnaka if you wouldn't have done this BS. And 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 Souls that dude to call it out, right? Like he's like, hey, we can save him if we get there on time. Nope, this is gonna waste. And so. I dislike her because it's like you're making her so politically focused, and I like that, right? Um, I also really like Yord because he does seem like the rookie cop, right? Like that you're showing these different Jedi, political, like the sage, and then you have the rookie cop that's like, oh, I'm going to pull out my lightsaber soon right away because I'm a protector, and that's what I'm going to do. And I know it comes from a good place. I know, it, I know it doesn't come from a bad place, but it comes from... But the thing is, as a Jedi, you shouldn't be pulling out your saber, and that's something, a strength that I think they've also shown, which is, the, which the villain has used, villain so to speak, to their, to their side, which is, oh, I thought you're not supposed to use your lightsaber unless you're going to kill somebody. Likewise, right? You shouldn't pull out your lightsaber unless there's a threat that you can't stop unless you have to use your lightsaber. I mean, it's the same thing with with like police tactics. Like you shouldn't have to pull out your gun unless you have to go to that level and stop, like they have to be at that same level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I love that they're showing that and I and and it's so great to me. So I I like Osha, like she's fine. I do also like um uh, what's her name? Daphne Keene's character. Uh, she was X-23. I really like her character as well. Um, even like the new alien character that's the tra tracker, they didn't know like what kind of like Basil, uh, yes, Basil. yeah, Basil that looked kind of like a like an otter. Like I love that stuff because it's cute. Like to me, I go like, yeah, it's fine to have like cute stuff in and like kind of campy, funny, you know, like stuff in in Star Wars. Like that's fine because what are all these things? You have to go like, what inspired George Lucas? Samurai stuff, Flash Gordon. Dune, obviously, you know. So, are they Doctor doing who? Doctor, Doctor who, who? Are they doing who? justice oh, yeah. when in this stuff? Yeah, maybe not all in one episode, but as we've seen more and more, we're seeing more and more of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's really cool to me. Like, especially that they're doing like kung fu or whatever kind of martial arts instead of fighting. I go, yes, because Jedi should not have to use their lightsaber unless they are going up against. Blaster fire or someone else with, you know, a lightsaber. Some kind of an upper right. threat. Exactly. So, ambassador. This is where I kind of want to put you in here. Um, they're bland. What would make them better? What would you want to see? I think it would be better to get more distinct uh, personalities that are more than two dimensional. And then, like, the Vespra character is just like every time on scene. She just like kills the mo anything that's going on. Like it's just not not a very good actor, and it's pretty clear why she got the gig. Mm. Married to the director, mm. oh, I'll okay. do it. Soul has some moments that are good, but I feel like they could have done a lot uh, better with him as well. And that I feel like just the big thing the big thing missing from all of this is logic. <laughs> Okay. In general, like, you're getting a fire extinguisher to put out a fire in space. <laughs> that, that is definitely something science-y that was a little interesting. The whole going after her, even though you got ship logs that prove she never left the ship, and even if she did, to get to where she would need to commit the crime would take more, more, way more time than she has to even go there and come back mm. it's like why were you why was she even considered guilty because uh witnesses happen but also in a lot of crimes witnesses are something you want but they're not they're not something you can convict with easily you need other evidence there as well because uh when it comes to victims testimonies they keep changing and so they're not as reliable when it comes mm. to eyewitnessing something because the viewpoint keeps changing more and more as time goes on 
Okay. And, the, and the inconsistencies just show up. That's just what's been proven by witnesses in general. Right. So what about stuff that is adding to the canon, adding to the lore of Star Wars? The, mm -hmm. the weirdest one was having Mundi show up. To call it Legends, where they got it from, is even a bit of a stretch. Mm -hmm. Because when the, you make movies, you always have, you always prepare, a lot of good directors will prepare, and writers will prepare like a little script, little thing for them to kind of know their character. A good example of that is Mad Max uh, Fury Road. When they did Furiosa, a lot of the stuff in the Furiosa movie, like the big points that happen, were already written down mm -hmm. when they made Mad Max Fury Road. And they kind of gave it as like a sum up of, this is who your character is, this is how they feel. And so, even in Star Wars, that was done. And a lot of the information will especially in the 90s and 2000s, would turn into movie guides. The information of where Mundi was age and everything was in the movie guide for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Mm. And that was what the actor was given go off of for information was things, was uh, how old he is and a little bit of a brief summary of just who he is as a person. Mm to be able to play that role. So to kind of say that's Legends is a bit of a, is a bit of a stretch in itself. Well then Pablo, what do you think about something that's been added that you say it's good? I feel, so for one, I feel like you're being super nitpicky. Like, th this is for, it's, sci it's not science fiction, it really isn't. It's science fantasy is what it is, it really is. Because it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not science. It's I mean the science really could be thrown out. It's it's fiction fantasy more than anything else. I mean it, it doesn't even take place in our own universe because we don't have any of this stuff. It's a made up thing, and and anyone new bring that's coming in to create can make up stuff because well because they can. And just like that, you can go okay. Well, originally this is his age and that's how long they lived. Well, they changed it. I mean they Disney owns it now and they can change it. I, I know originally they wanted to use Yoda, and I think a lot of people have been asking for Yoda and have been wanting to see like a Yoda versus Yoda story, like a twin Yoda, mm -hmm. maybe kind of like this, and, and somewhat like you said, where they had a lot of ideas, and then Disney was like, this is what you can use, because they shot down being able to use Yoda, and so I think that's what they originally wanted, is they, they wanted to go, let's do a Yoda story, when it's Yoda and his twin, and his twin's evil, and it's probably a lot similar to this story, but then they're like, you can't use Yoda. And they're like, all right, what about Kiati Mundi? You know, just to kind of somewhat tie it in, and then we're going to change his age. And it's like, yeah, they can do that. I think that's super neat picky. I think that's a dumb reason to hate this show. I also think it's really dumb to hate this show to be like, because this force coven of witches... created these twins it ruins anakin and it ruins all of star wars i'm like no it it i don't see how it does it's because it was different for one right like it's the difference between like they created it it just happened right like it just the force got it to happen to counteract what plagueis and uh the emperor do or rather the emperor because if you don't consider Darth plagueis because it's not considered canon anymore which is fine whatever you don't it still exists. So you can or cannot choose to count that. Uh, I just feel like the story is so intriguing enough that it's kept me going, right? Like the mystery of like, well, what did the Jedi do? Like, were they more involved that they're showing? Like, even that flashback episode, that showed me war. Because I just thought it was like a house fire. You know what I mean? Like, when they talked about it. And then I was like, oh, this was not a house fire. This was way worse. It was a stone fire. So, yeah. <laughs> but see, I don't know the properties of that stone 
is that stone in that on that planet flammable? I don't. And once again, we don't know the full mystery of are the Jedi more involved than than we think they are? Did they cause this? We don't know that mystery of why do they feel this guilt, especially. Uh, what's it, Torben, like, or Tobin or whatever, like, why does he feel that guilt? Even Kalnaka, he... Forgive me. We thought we were doing the right thing. Has exiled himself, too, in a different way. Why? What is this guilt? I want to know what the, these Jedi did that make them feel so guilty, and also, why does Soul, why does he come to peace with it? And I also kind of feel like, probably everyone's going to have to die by the end of this, which is also going to connect the dots as to why they don't discover why or who the Sith are or were, that they've come back and now they have the rule of two, or whatever the, whatever it is. Like, they're just going to get enough, because it was Bane that's the one that brought back the rule of two, and Bane has been made canon in Clone Wars. So, so that's, so that, this can all happen, especially if they just kill everybody off, you know, or at least those masters or whatever. I mean, it, it looks pretty fierce already, and I don't even think that's well, the master. Well, if you kill off all those people, still a massive surge of people were killed. You're going to look into it. I mean, not if you don't have the people, you know what I mean? Like... Well, so, if they have a council, a low-level council, and a high council... But once again, they've they used have... political reasons as the reason they're covering up so much, right? Like, they, if these people die and they get decimated by these, by this dark, use, this dark force user, once again, the political Jedi doesn't want any of that to get out. A lot of the Jedi seem like, no, 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 we can't look bad, we can't look bad. So if all these people died, why wouldn't they just want to cover it up? Because they've been covering it up so far. We don't know yet. Once again, we're talking about something that hasn't even happened yet. So why are we complaining about something that we have, that hasn't even happened yet, right? We're just, this is, it hasn't even happened yet. But as far as I'm concerned, like, to me, episode four is where it's at. Like, is the best it's been. All this stuff, like, the way that it's gone, it's been so intense. And then the way that the, the Sith showed up was, like, just so ominous and so epic. And I was like, oh my god. Once again, I don't think that's the Master. I think that's the Apprentice. Which makes it even scarier because Sith are super powerful and we should be seeing that level of super power and why it takes like a cabal of Jedi to defeat one Sith. So we're at a point I feel like where this is where we can start to start to make calls here. Ambassador, <laughs> what do you rate this? Well, I still some more character stuff, like especially in the fourth episode, May just like hell-bent on killing the Jedi, and just, nah, my sister's around, I'm not gonna do it. And then with Osha, just like, when they get back from the mission after she tried to kill her sister, she's like, I'll let the Jedi handle this. It just doesn't make any sense, and there's nothing usually in stories. Do you not know women? They are very indecisive! <laughs> they flip-flop left and right on the constant in one moment in their own heads. They're going through all these different scenarios, but... Usually there's some kind of a catalyst there or some... Well, there was events. catalyst for both of those. She... And that's Just the that thing. one encounter, that's, that's a little ridiculous. The Sith use people. And that's why immediately I knew she is not the, she is not the apprentice. There's no way she's the apprentice. The Sith use people, right? They're users. And she was using this. And the Sith should have known once she finds out the truth, she's not going to want to follow through with this. But that's okay, because the Sith knows it's going to get them to where they want to be, or whoever this acolyte is. That's all they need. And yeah, Osha was like, she's conflicted too. Seeing someone that you think is dead, it's going to shake you to your core and make you rethinking back and forth. Like, should I be involved? Should I not be involved? Am I going to make it worse? Am I going to make it better? I don't know. So you're going to flip-flop like in that situation, right? Like, Especially you go like in police-type work. Should I be involved? Am I going to make it worse? Am I going to make it better? The Jedi are using her. Like, she was out, and that was really the better thing to do, but they're like, can we use her? Like I said, they're not exactly good, and I will say that's the one thing I dislike about this series is I'm tired of seeing Jedi in a bad light. I'm ready to see them in a good light, which I did like that in Ahsoka, where she was like, I'm chill, I'm cool, we're gonna, I'm gonna forgive, and we're gonna move forward, and I'm gonna teach. You know, I like that. In this, you're showing more bad. It's a different, it's different, once again. I, I do like seeing the good more than the bad. And obviously, 
as the bad comes in, the Sith or, or the dark side users, I think, will see that. And I'm hoping we will. So, so do you feel like you have enough information to rate this, sir? Yeah. What would you rate it? Pass. So, Pablo. Uh, well, the ambassador's hater. And I'm not going to say that it's an absolute... The thing is, is... It's good enough to keep me watching. You, I feel like you can't grade it until it's a hole, right? Because it could just crash and burn. There is a possibility that from going forward, it could just be horrible. But I will say it, episode four, absolute must see. The, uh, the first one, the first because it came as a controlled pair, the first two, I have to say it is too. And just because I say something is a must see, once again, it doesn't mean that I think it's perfect and it doesn't that it's flawless or anything like that. What I mean is that it's good, it's so good, you have to see it. And then, so like the third episode, I was like, yeah, it was fine. It wasn't, you know, like, I liked it, it was good, it wasn't the best. So I felt like, yeah, it's a must-see, like, in the overall arcing, but on its own, it's probably just going to be a check it out, right? Mm -hmm. But the fourth one, I'm like, the fourth one absolutely is a must-see. And that's why, like, collectively, when I go like, okay, if you add up those scores, overall it's a must-see for me. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's the kind of fan that you are. Like, what are you clinging to? I'm the kind of fan that's like, you know what? I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. You know, I'm here to just enjoy. And, like, I can watch, I can watch this with my kids. I can throw it on and have it on. The, like, the kids don't really pay attention to it much. They'll kind of pay attention. But I, at least I can watch it with them around. And because it's PG. And it's okay, like there's not, you know, it's, there's nothing too horrible in there. It's, I don't see anything that's gonna like scar them, you know? I mean, if anything, like there might be some good stuff. And, and that's why like, yeah, and, and once again, it's like, it's not necessarily for kids, I would say like mid-school and up, you know? Mm. It's worth checking out. Yeah, I, I just feel like people are just, they're just, be, they're being too hard. It is different, it is very different. It's meant to be different. Uh, I think people are just being nit nitpicky with it and I, I, I really don't see how it's bad. I really don't. I don't. I really don't see how it's bad. I mean, just because, like, even when I look at The Last Jedi, it's not a bad movie. I, I feel like there's just bad parts, you know? Like, there's just parts that are, like, not good or, you know... You're like, okay, that was dumb. That was stupid. You know, like there's well, a, a bad there's movie way, all together. There's it's way too many of those premises on bad ideas. If it was, if if it was all completely on its own, once again, separate from Star Wars, you'd be like, this is a great movie, and that's why a lot of critics liked it, right? Because they go like, I don't care about the rest of Star Wars. I'm just here to grade this as its own thing, mm. uh, and that's why a lot of people don't like stuff that builds two things too. Like a lot of people didn't give good grades to like Endgame or Infinity War because they're like, well, I don't have to want to watch. 20 different movies and shows, and it's like, yeah, but that's the magic. When you're there in the theater and they're like, Avengers Assemble, you lost it. When, when he got the hammer, you lost it. I and I think cried. this is a similar <laughs> thing where it's like, we're building up to the lightsaber battles, right? Like, it's not all going to be lightsaber battles. We're, you know, it's the ideas of like, hey, the Jedi are protectors and they shouldn't be using their lightsabers. And But we're going to see them use their lightsabers. We might see them get messed up. I don't know. So we'll just have to see. We'll, we'll have see. to tell. We'll see. It's a lot of... It's, it's interesting. What about you? Oh, geez. Well, I'm just a middleman here. <laughs> I'm just, you know... But you've seen this, it, right? But yeah, absolutely. Okay. I've watched it, and, you know... It, I'm I'm the, also the kind... You know, I will be open to say I'm the kind of person that's like Pablo. Watch the entire thing. Take it as a whole experience. And then give some sort of rating. I'm still watching it. You all, you've heard our opinions here. Okay. We'll leave it up to you whether you want to invest into this. So, we'll see how it goes. Yes. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's get into the boys. The boys. Yeah, the boys. <laughs> I binged it. I binged it last, uh, last over the last couple days uh, to keep up with the ambassador. And so, it's season four. And they only put out, or they're going weekly, right? Yeah, they're going weekly. I thought they put it out in parts, actually, because there was four episodes. I didn't know they were putting it out weekly. But yeah, they put it out weekly, so there's four episodes. That's what I watched. I heard this is the, the scores. Once again, the scores factor in, which is the scores are worse for this season. And I've been saying this for a while, which is the formula is getting somewhat tired, which is this constant where it's like M.M. has to take over and he gets it into it with... Butcher, he gets into it with Butcher and kicks Butcher out, and then Butcher does something to get back in, and then he saves. And it's kind of like a constant repeat of this, but they change it enough where it f 
where you're like, okay, same formula, but different situations, you know, mm -hmm. enough. They didn't do like a complete crazy like they usually do for the first episode. We just had Butcher send a picture of his butthole to, uh, to somebody and you had to see that, which I want to know if that was really his butthole or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or if it was just a, if it was like a stand-in butthole, you know? Um, I don't know which why. Which is known to happen. Yeah, it's like, yeah. seriously, butt stand-ins exist in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, know. yeah, a lot of stand-ins for, for those kinds of scenes. Um, Anything but, with Mila Kunas, if it shows her butt, it's a butt stand-in. Uh, so, but yeah, I, I'm still enjoying it. Like I said, it's still good. Once again, I feel like people are review bombing it because, because once again, these outside factors, I feel like another part of it is the outside factors is uh, you have the actors, you have the directors, you have the showrunners, you have all these people. Same thing happened with Acolyte, which is you have them do their interviews and then the hardcore old school fanboys are watching this and going, I hate this before it even came out. And so they did that, which they hated it because they went, uh, by the way, this is making fun of a certain kind of people the whole time and then they're going what you know <laughs> and so i feel like it is it is more prevalent i'm like is it more prevalent in this season i feel like it's a little more prevalent in this season it's significantly um, more it's a dumb move to do if you want success it, it's always a numbers game yeah if you dabble into anything political, you have the threat of 50% of your fan base disappearing. Unless you mask it well enough like Lucas did in the 70s, where mm. people didn't realize that it was about Vietnam. Mm. I didn't. I was a kid, and a lot of people I don't think got that it was about Vietnam, mm. right? I mean, to me, even now, if I watch it, I go like, how is this about Vietnam? But when he explains it, I go, oh, okay. All right, that makes sense. Without explanation... But I do feel like, yeah, they are going a little hard on the nose yeah, here it's just a, with this season. It, and it, what's making it really hard is, like, more the first three episodes than anything else, they just suddenly started adding and talking about stuff that just wasn't there. And now it's just magically there, which, which really puts you in a weird spot. Mm -hmm. Writing-wise, if you're just, like, suddenly these issues are there that weren't there before... And would you say it's, as a person that is still not fully aware of things in Guarding the Boys, would you say it's more about how the world works that they're adding stuff in, or is it more about character behavior? They're changing character behavior mm. to match uh, certain figures. Mm, okay. And some of them they're trying to backtrack as well, because it used to be with the boys where they really, they, they had their views, but they kind of shit on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but they're trying to, like, retcon it. Mm. Like, uh, there's, there's one character that's, like, super, super evil who is, like, kind of making fun of Okazi AOC mm. there. Okay. I didn't pick up on that. I didn't pick it up until someone mentioned it. Then I was like, look, I was like, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's there. It was subtle. Okay. It was a good, good subtlety. But now they're trying, you noticed in the new season, they're trying to, like, change her character to put her more towards the good guys when really... She wasn't. He, he, she's not completely evil. She just kind of, I, I would say, more of a chaotic neutral who's willing to get dirty mm -hmm. to get things done if she needs to. Mm -hmm. Blow people's heads off. It works. I feel like they kind of made that change in uh, in that spinoff, though. That's where they, like, explained her backstory, and you go, oh, that's why she's doing this. Which is, she's really just trying to get... She's trying to get rid of soups, but she became one herself to get rid of soups, right? You can't kill a monster without becoming a monster type of ideology. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, and it's, it's... So, to me, I feel like that adds more layers to her character, whereas before it was... She was kind of... She, there wasn't much there, and now because they added that, that adds more. Um, but they're still trying to redeem her. Even if you understand their modus, sometimes people are just bad. Yeah, no, just it's because, still bad. Just because they, they start out with good intentions, but it ends up bad. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, just like they say, right? The, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they also say if you stand for, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. 
So it's it's that's part of it too. Is like yeah, I, I understand you're you're ostracizing you. Your, the other fifty percent or, or forty, whatever the percentage is, there there is a wrong and in, in a right here too. There is a certain level where they're saying like, hey, yeah, this is right and wrong. I don't, it, it's crazy to me too because like even though this season doesn't feel as gruesome as other seasons, as a parent, I'm just like getting really turned off by like the complete obscene. You know what I mean? Like I'm just like, I got kids now. Like and there's enough bad stuff on in real life that I don't need to see this in my... It doesn't feel like an escape. Oh, you were right, Stan. This vacation is exactly what we needed. Hello! Roger? Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey! Ah! Right? Like, it doesn't feel like... Like, for some people it might feel like an escape, but at a certain point I just go like, you're just showing me... This is just... Like, modern day Life. talking points. Now. Yeah, mm. kind of. So, I mean, it has its strengths, it has its weaknesses. I still, it's still a great show. And it still stands out from anything else that's out there, too. So I know there's people that are like, also, you know, if you're the kind of person that's like, I'm tired of the Marvel stuff, and I'm kind of the lighthearted stuff, and I'm, this is your thing. This is all for you. But if you don't want to go too dark, and you don't want to go too political, and you don't want to go too hard, then this is not for you. It's still, def for me, it's still definitely worth checking out, but it's not a must-see anymore. No, the, mm -hmm. the quality of the first three episodes were so awful. Yeah. And the fourth episode wasn't perfect, but had some good moments in it that were great. And seeing Homelander get his revenge is understandable, but it also makes you ask some questions like, why did it take him so long? if he was in charge, to go do that. Because mm -hmm. that sounds more like a close to day one thing instead of a afterthought. Because mm -hmm. this just makes it look like an afterthought, which I don't think is right for Homelander. To be fair, he is an evil maniac. He was still a tested lab rat and was just, like, experimenting on, hmm, let's see how long he can last in fire. Yeah, they created him. They created this monster, and then, yeah. like, when the monster comes to destroy you, why are you surprised? How are you surprised? Mm. You know? Almost like a V for Vendetta thing, yeah. it feels like. So... Maybe. Okay. Well, I, I heard this, too, that in the comics, what actually happened is that Black Noir is actually a clone of Homelander, and that Black Noir, all the evil stuff that Homelander was doing wasn't actually Homelander, it was actually Black Noir dressed up as Homelander. And so that was the twist in the comics, and they changed it just because they're like, this doesn't feel right for the show well, and what we're they, trying to go for. They also so. killed the Black Noir in yeah, the show. right. But th about the only thing amusing is the new Black o Noir, that they're, they, they just decided not to let everyone know he's dead. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they just... Replace him with like an actor, him. like yeah. an actor, the soup, an act, a soup actor, kind of whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, it's so funny. He's like, like exactly what am I? He keeps asking questions, hmm. like just like, okay, so what do you want me to do exactly? And uh, they just get frustrated. Like Kovar's like, just follow our lead and be quiet. Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, it's it. There's there's funny parts, but yeah, like you said, there's a lot of stuff happening. Like even with. Huey, shouldn't have, this have kind of been done earlier? And, and like you said, even with Homeland, you go like, shouldn't you have done this way sooner? It, it's worth checking out. Yeah, I, I can only give it a worth checking out. Cool. If, if it wasn't for the fourth episode, I would have probably had to say pass. Let's move on to Star Trek Discovery, which finally caught up with that, watched all of that. It actually has been a few weeks because I was like, I got so into it that I was like, I gotta finish this. And... The way that we've scheduled our recordings, we actually could have, the last episode, we could have, if we would have postponed it a week, we could have covered it because it actually ended l the previous month. Yeah. And that's, and I think we're going to have that same problem again with like my adventures with Superman maybe. I mean, I liked it. It was a solid season. It did kind of end up going nowhere with the finale of they're like, oh, it was the progenitors and the progenitors were like, no, it wasn't us. It was someone else before yeah. us. You know, so it was like, whoever created us is the one that created this. But if you want to use it, you can use it if you trust people to use it safely. And then they're like, nope, don't trust people. Which is fair. It's definitely fair. Yeah, should not trust people. 
You know, like they're people are not trustworthy. Like it just makes you wonder as an why overall, didn't they just destroy destroy the from the beginning. From yeah, from the beginning. If you're if you would have had that thought process from the get go, which is what if we find it and then we go like their their whole thought process from the beginning was flawed and stupid. The idea of hey, let's give it to this uh, 23rd century Starfleet that we're still not 100% familiar with. Let's trust yeah. them with the power to create and destroy life. Mm. And do just whatever they want. I still enjoyed the journey, though. I said, it was, you know, I, I still, like I said, it, the, the final season makes me want to go back and re-watch the rest of the seasons that I missed. And so I think in that they are successful. They've they've hooked me for newer Star Trek as well because I'm now I'm gonna watch the newer stuff. So I mean it wasn't a complete failure. I still enjoyed it. It was still entertaining. I won't yeah. say it was like the best of the best, but it was definitely worth checking out at the end of the day. Like it's still enjoyable to me. I still was entertained, and that's what that's what I'm showing up for. I'm not I'm I'm not even like not everything has to blow me away, which I was impressed with certain things and huh. and you know, but. It, I, I, I had fun. It was good. It was enjoyable. I, Yeah, like, maybe you're just kind of like, yeah, if we would have thought, if, if we should have made this up at our decision up at the end. Well, what if we find it and then this? Well, then let's destroy it now. Boom. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're right. You, you are right. You know? But like, say, hey, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed the journey. You know, yeah, for that and, one, so and the finale. I like the characters. I, it's a good time to me. I felt like the finale just wasn't good as an episode mm -hmm. altogether, because it was like basically felt like two two partial episodes yeah. just rammed together, uh -huh. harsh without even like really trying. So like, I wonder yeah. too if we're gonna see down the road when she's old, if we're gonna see like a, her come back as the old admiral or whatever she was you know like in the end so yeah it, but yeah yeah and so it was just so jarring the difference between them they it felt really rushed the whole ending to it mm -hmm. the main season story was just super rushed like they're just trying to get it done so they could ram horn the uh good farewell yeah uh, content but the farewell content didn't really fit in because it just happened i think it would have been better if they would have given us like another episode at least to be like to give that farewell episode you know to like to give it because, its own because what mm. would have been better was resolve the issue mm -hmm. set up leeway for the farewell ep yeah. part because there was no leeway or anything it mm -hmm. just happened just right mm. whoa man you just ran through a big pile of dog shit it happens no, I agree. And so then dear. suddenly it's 30 years later and <laughs> she has a kid and she is getting ready to retire the Discovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting. Well, even that, and she's like, oh, I'm just going to drop it off here. And that's it. And I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? What is? And I wonder if that's going to ties into the earlier seasons of the show even. Or, or if it's going to tie into another show. So that, that, that makes me interested for other Trek, you know? Mm. So either way, whether it's its own show or whatever. So what do you give it? I give it a pass. Ooh, gosh. This guy's just doling them out, huh? Left and right. All right, let's get into Doctor Who, which this whole season has been up and down and all over the place, right? Like mm. it really has in so many different ways. I mean, the 73 yards was confusing because it didn't seem like they really resolved anything. It it plays along with, with your, like, different universes and magic and, and stuff, and you feel somewhat satisfied, but then that's not the ending, so it wasn't really too satisfying, and then yeah. it was really confusing. Now, seeing the finale, I go, what did that all have to do with anything? Like, now it makes me really frustrated with that episode. I won't say that it's... I mean, that episode specifically, I would say it's it's worth checking out because it wasn't a bad episode, you know, it's it's, it's not a pass, uh, but it just left too many open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. And then there was the next episode, I don't know, um, which was Dot and Bubble, right? And that, yeah. one was, that one was funny. It was interesting, but here's the problem. If you're going to do something that's already been done, you need to do it better. If you can't do it better, don't do it. Like, Black Mirror 
has already destroyed that and done phenomenal job with it. Okay. With the whole social media, futuristic social media to the point where it's like controlling your lives. Mm. But it was just done so much better in Black Mirror. That was, yes, but I think the other layers that they added to it, which was, and I and they probably did this too, which was economic status in the Black Mirror episode. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen that one. Mm. But, and so I'm sure that was in there. So economic status, like the rich and the poor, you know, that was in there. I was kind of in denial. I'll, I'll be honest. I was in denial that it was a racial thing, right? Until I was like, oh, yes, these people are very Caucasian. Like they are, they are very pale. All every <laughs> single the, every single one of these rich people are very pale. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Cause like she showed up on on her bubble and she whisked him away right away. White lady showed up. She gave her her some time. And I was like, wait, this is way more messed up and nuanced than I thought. So when you like get to the ending and they're like, no, we're not going with you. And I'm like, why? Why wouldn't you? You know, at first I was like, oh, it's a rich poor thing. And I was like, that doesn't make sense in that. Oh my, that's me It was so messed up that I was like, "That's just so messed up." Yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 it makes you feel sadness and also the hate that he that he the doctor feels right because mm -hmm. the doctor changes right. He's never been black before, so even when he was a woman, when he was a woman, that was crazy to me because he's like, "I didn't have a, this problem when I was a man." You know, everyone <laughs> questions me being a doctor or like, what, "No, I never had these problems." And that was con consistently funny, like whatever situation they were in. They have not really been done that, like, and even this was not in the face. It was a subtle nuance. It ended up being more powerful than it really was because, yeah, like you said, someone has done better the social media thing. You're right, but this was more than that, and that's why that episode was so good once again though you didn't have that much of the doctor and the companion in it this is doctor who where is my doctor you know i don't want my doctors just showing up at the end even 73 yards he was there for 73 seconds it felt like you know what i mean like and then that's it it's like come on this is doctor who i get like focusing on the companion but even the companion i've always felt like the companions have showed their smarts you know donna she's like super smart and i go yeah, she does. A lot of them, they end up showing their smarts, and I go, that's why they deserve to be here with the doctor, right? Because they're problem solvers. Which I also kind of made the whole thing come full circle, which is, she really is an ordinary person. Once she fixed her ordinary life, she didn't care that much about the mysteries of the universe. Because sometimes, ordinary life is enough. You don't need to traverse other times and galaxies because... Your family's enough. Like, that gives you enough to feel complete, you know, to have that. That's enough. And so even that was, like, that was powerful in its thing. Like, the whole Sutek and, and like, the whole Egyptian it, thing. Like, it was all right, but I felt like they were just trying to ram classic Who in there. Yeah. Without really doing all the work. Get in my belly! Mm -hmm. Because it's a lot better when the work is done. Mm-hmm. And the sad thing is, seeing this stuff right now, compared to what he's done, makes you wonder, what happened, man? You you did good stuff. We've seen really, really good stuff, yet we're getting this right now. The one that was really well done was, like, when he introduced, like, classic characters here and there. Mm -hmm. And then just had, like, a companion meet, <laughs> meet up mm -hmm. to help... Uh, prevent the, not the Slovene, it was another, another like, evil race from mm -hmm. taking over, and basically you had, like, the former prime minister that he got removed from office mm -hmm. getting all the Doctor Who companions together to uh, give the Doctor a chance to build a win. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, a really cool, well done, well thought of episode where it wasn't just we're ramming a whole bunch of classic stuff together. It's a... We've established how this character could get all those people together. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you're keeping an eye on the Doctor, and you notice the Doctor meets up with Sarah Jane Smith again, she's on your radar. Yeah. And then uh, other, other characters as well, like they even had um, Captain Jack Harkness show up as well. Well... He wasn't physically there, but he was 
assisting through telecommunications. Mm -hmm. But it was cool to see all those characters meet up. And when you're doing it right, it works really well. But if you're just ramming it together, it takes away some of the moments. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like the last two episodes are worth watching. But I would give the rest the pass. Okay. Yeah, see, the thing is, I thought they were building up to the toy maker's cabal, right? Like, yeah. the toy maker was the... That, that crossover, and I was like, okay, now it's going to be his creations are all coming after the Doctor. And we had one. And I was like, yeah, well, the next episodes are going to be about that, too. I thought that's what they were set, setting up. And then, or at least one of them, right? Like, at least that was going to be the finale, is they were setting up one of them, you know, and maybe it was one of the toy makers, one of their characters, another one was, like, setting stuff up, and that's what it was leaving. It wasn't that. Like you said, if they would have done the setup for Sutek, I would have been like, cool. It did just feel like an old school Tom Baker throwback randomly for no reason other than, hey, I like Tom Baker and I like Sutek and that's why we're going to throw him in. And the weird thing is, like, the the companion they brought in, the former companion that's with Unit, mm -hmm. has, like, nothing to do with Tom Baker either. Yeah. Uh, she she actually has to do with... She just showed up randomly one time. No quite, No one knows how she became a companion. Mm. It was one episode that shows her as a companion in the future, but then the next season, she's there, but never tells you how she got there. So she started with Colin Baker and then ended, and then left with Sylvester McCoy. Okay. So uh, Colin Baker, he's kind of forgettable. He was the one with the really crazy multicolor suit. Mm. Probably one of the worst doctors. Mm. And then uh, Sylvester McCoy, you may know him from The Hobbit as Radagast hey, Brown. Radagast, <laughs> yes! <laughs> good, Really good actor. And it was a shame they didn't bring Ace back again. Because mm. that's like the companion of Sylvester McCoy that's a little more enjoyable. Mm. Uh, she's a girl from the 80s that like they never say what ha how how she left the TARDIS mm. because uh, she was the companion when the show was canceled. Okay. Um, and it was a really weird dynamic that they still have never done before. She was like a daughter to him. Mm -hmm. It was like a father daughter type relationship as a co doctor and companion. Mm. Right, and I, and I think that's the thing is that there's a lot of threads here that they laid out that they could have done, and when you look back on it, this really was just focused on Ruby. Like, this season really was about Ruby more than it was anything else, and her emotional, and her emotional stuff. Like, that's what I've seen from a lot of stuff. People said, hey, this is cla kind of classic RTD, which is to focus not so much... It focuses more on the emotional beats than anything else, right? Like, it's just kind of like whatever, and they focus on it, and you're like, yeah, that's true. Because even Rogue, like, they set up Rogue in the Bridgerton episode, which was hilarious and awesome, I thought. And I was like, okay, you set up this, of this uh, character, and now he's going to be going to find this character. It's going to be him and Ruby searching for this for this possible love interest character, at least. But you don't see more of it. And I'm like, okay, well, they can do it later. But are they going to? Because it seems like so many times they set up these things, and then they don't capitalize on them. Just like, oh, the toy maker's creations are coming after you. And it was one. Because then they focused on Ruby instead. And so, yeah, it's weird because the whole, the season as a whole, it's all over the place. Emotionally, yeah, it does hit those beats. But it is it does have its weakness. So I cannot say that the season as a whole is a must-see. But it's definitely worth checking out as a whole. Let's move on to... Black Clover came out. Uh, season 3 came out on Netflix. So I just wanted to mention this real quick, which is I am not caught up. But I started... I always lose my place, too, so I started at the beginning of Season 2 since I was like, okay, let me see if I can try to get... No, you can't get caught up. They're, they have, like, so many episodes per season. I think it's, like, 50-some, 52 oh, episodes per sure. season. But I've been watching it. I love it. I just love Asta and how he's just an ordinary person that just works hard. Like, he puts in the work. He does the push-ups. He does the sit-ups. He's just... He's nonstop. He won't give up, and I absolutely love that. And I want to make his headband, but I can't find the materials that I need exactly to make mm. his exact headband. But if I can, I will, and throw it on the store for everybody, because I want one. I'm going to make one well, if I can. Well, but I always like I the back and forth between him and the girl mm. that comes from royalty. 
Oh yeah, Noel, right? Noel. Yes. Yeah, it's so well done and funny. Hmm. It's one of one of the best like back and forth there. And then uh, a lot of the side characters are just really good in this. But if you're really serious about watching it, you can do Netflix. Mm -hmm. But I would just go to Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. They have uh, all the episodes up to date. You can watch a sub or dub. Right mm -hmm. on. So, I in that series, I love it so much. Even though I'm not caught up, I, I mean, it's at least worth checking out for anybody. I love it, so it's a must-see for me from everything that I've seen so far. I haven't disliked it yet. I thought he was going to be hurt longer because his arms were, like, useless. And so I thought maybe he was going to do, like, a Deku thing where, you know, because, like, Deku messed up his, his arms too, and then he was like, all right, I'm just going to do kicks. You can't do that with swords necessarily. So I thought, like, well, maybe he's going to do a zero thing and hold it with his teeth, right? And I was like, maybe he could try to do that. <laughs> and then his jaw's going to be rocked out, you know? <laughs> but no, but uh, that's the only thing. But it, it turned into a great arc. But yeah, so yeah, it's a must watch. That's all I have to say about that. And then uh, Baki Hanma versus Kengen Ashuran, which are both... Netflix anime and they have similar styles so they made them they had a, a special where they just had a lot of the characters face off right mm. and so it's pretty cool it's pretty interesting um I, I I mean I feel like if you like one and not the other that's fine it might it'll probably get you into the other and if you like both you're just kind of like yeah that makes sense and it works and you'll enjoy it like it's not super like the best thing ever but it's definitely not bad it's still it's definitely worth checking out. Like it's it's awesome, and and I had a good time. Like it's just it's a fighting. It's just these, like it's just different martial arts and crazy fighting dudes. Would like you say it's a shonen then? Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Let's move on to uh, Sweet Tooth season three. I I've seen the first season. I and but I didn't get to the second or third. But fill us in. Oh, Sweet Tooth is a uh, really good. Uh, so basically, they may have found a way to cure the virus but the whole time they're going there they keep trying to like ask us like what do you really want out of this because uh, when it comes down to it thinking everything's going to be okay is going to be hard because if you is potentially if you cure the virus you'll get rid of half hybrids hybrids mm. because uh, basically in this world a pa pandemic virus happened that where it basically like almost destroyed the world oh, and geez. there's okay. very little survivors but then to make it worse humanity can't reproduce anymore oh that's great so when they have kids they're half animal mm, okay so so the main character is half human half deer that's cute yeah. <laughs> So he's like a guy with, he's like a human, but then he has antlers and like a deer ear. Mm. And uh, he's the main character, Gus. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, this kid. Yeah, yeah it is he, really cute. He, like, especially <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like it, it's a lot like prettier than the comic book it's based off of. Huh. Right. The and comic book was basically one of those series where the guy's a really good writer, but... He is an artist, but would you call him the best artist? Not, not, not really, but he gets the job done, and he, in its own way, it is, like, talented and nice, but it's not, it, it is jarring art. It's very, ugly. It's, it's ugly very, art, but yeah. it fits the world because the world is ugly. And so that's, that's the only times that I've really seen Jeff Lemire's art is when he's going... My ugly art fits with this ugly story, mm. and and it works. And that's for me like it's hard to watch the show because I go, this show's too real and too pretty, especially with the pandemic stuff. Like I was like, kind of turned off by that because I was like, this is too real, you know. But it's, uh, but yeah, but it is it's kind of fantasy too. Yeah, it is, it is. It it definitely focuses on the fantasy side of things as well. Okay. But it also like asks like difficult questions you're in a place and you know that if you survive you're gonna potentially kill off the rest of humanity what do you do mm. questions like that mm -hmm. are asked a lot in this show and then of course some people are trying to race for a cure 
some of the cures that have been found are just not going to be that promising mm -hmm. because uh, then it turns out turns out to be like is the cure worth it if I decide to go genocide on another group of people to create the cure is that cure actually worth making mm -hmm. especially yeah. if it kills everyone right like if you go if it doesn't fix the problem then you just killed anybody that can reproduce or can continue mm -hmm. any kind of life or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, and it's pretty cool. They they do some connections with, with the characters more. One of the minor characters in the second season, it hinted towards the end that she was probably going to carry on what the previous villain was trying to do. And so she does end up carrying it on and... You see, like, how brutal some people can be. Like, even some people are just bad enough where they want to get their goal done, but they don't care at what cost. Mm -hmm. they, don't care if they, they don't care if they have to use uh, hybrids to get the job done. It, it, it's, really, it's really dark and messed up, and it's nice the way they have it all, like, come back. And I guess from the beginning, the plot twist at the end was was already planned mm -hmm. and so they were able to keep it accurate so when you go see it you're like wait a minute how can this be something but for me to look forward to then i think i, I, I think it's it a, yet, so i think it's a must watch and if you like robert downey jr he produced this oh wow yeah. that's his life okay wow yeah. i didn't know that yeah I, I mean i love the books they're they're brilliant and phenomenal but I mean, it's it kind of tough. Like I said, the pandemic thing, and then w and then when you involve kids, like oh, it's 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 it messes with my heart. You know, it's like you kind of only have like so much in, in the tank when you have kids too, right? Like that mm -hmm. emotional uh, stuff, and and so you're like you kind of just want maybe mindless stuff like other things. You know, where you don't have to think too much. <laughs> so, um, which is yeah. So, but yeah, it's off off to check it out for sure. Uh, the wife and I enjoyed the the first season, so nice. we'll see if we can get check it out. Who saw Inside Out? I saw Inside oh. Out too. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I can emotionally handle it. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I gotta preface this first because I really had no desire whatsoever to see the movie. Mm. Okay. Not not one bit, and uh, Jafar, Jafar, he's our man. If he can't do it, right? I only saw the first one because. I got roped into it from my life. <laughs> okay. And I didn't really care for the first one. And so I was like, why are you going to have me go watch this with you if I didn't like the first one? And the second one was pretty much b about the same as the, as the first one. Mm. The only real difference is sadness and happy actually work together more. Mm. But they're basically... Puberty's happening, and they're trying to deal with new uh, emotions and uh, trying to figure out how to cope. But the movie movie does uh, oddly uh, make fun of uh, like childhood stuff and some other things as well. That you you'll recognize some of the stuff they make fun of. It's a little weird to have them like referencing Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah, oh, but they did. Okay. okay. Huh. Yeah. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I give it a pass, but if oh. you uh, if you like the Inside Out movies, then it's probably going to be a must see for you. Okay. I'm the type that's going to cry when I see this. Yeah, I I, um. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it when it's out on a service, which it'll, it'll probably be on Disney, right? So I'll definitely check it out when it's out on Disney Plus for sure. Let's get into Kaiju number eight. We talked a little bit about it in the previous podcast, and uh, yeah, it's it's just gotten so much better and so much more intense. What happened in it is I didn't expect it to happen so soon because these kind of things they they have a tendency to tease out for a long time. Sometimes it's interesting to see when someone has like a secret identity or whatever, like how long they can go without. And this one, I feel like that he's like, well, I don't want. And this this thing just happened where they're like, oh, these things are this these things are combining, 
to turn into a nuclear bomb. And he's like, all right, well, I don't want everyone to die, so I'm just going to reveal who and what I am now, and that's it. And you're like, okay. So the ramifications going forward is what you're like, oh, my God, I want to see how they handle this going forward. I mean, I kind of hope they just have him on as part of the team, but I'm interested to see... Like, are they going to have a trial? I mean, there's or whatever kind of steps they go through, you know? Like, they, even what they did with, with Eden when he they discovered that he was a Titan, it was like, it was intense. It was scary. You didn't know what was going to happen. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that kind of thing. And even the stuff leading up to that, because, like, the fight he had with the vice captain. And I was like, the vice captain's going to die. The vice captain has to die because he can't become vice captain if there is a vice captain. That was my thought process. I don't know if that's going to happen. It probably will eventually. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't even know. Like, they were pretty messed up by the injuries. Well, the vice captain's always been kind of interesting of a character. Yes. He he likes to laugh at the main character, but he also suspects... Something's going on. There's something off mm. with him and wants to find out what it is. Yeah. Because he's, like, looking at all these numbers, like, this person literally has 1% power, yet... He's able to do all this crazy stuff. Yet... Sometimes when we're monitoring him, it something goes something weird. goes weird mm. with the numbers, and he wants to figure out what's going on. Well, he ends up in like a blackout zone or something, yeah. so like he, he's able to mask it or whatever, you know. So he has dust things. But I was, you know, what's cool too is that he because he was doing things like he he got hurt or no no he had to do something super speed, and I was like, oh, why doesn't he just power up his legs? And I thought that in an earlier episode when I think he hurt his leg, and I was like, can't he just like use like just use the kaiju on his legs to like regenerate faster but he didn't know how to do that yet so like that's the thing or is he's slowly been depends on where he's things at out. too yeah because like he, if there's not people if there's people around he can't do it if people are gonna notice it he yeah can't do it right that's part of it too he doesn't want to reveal himself so it's 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 gonna be crazy and, and i like it i heard they're already doing a game for it which i'm like i love when they're like they do stuff like that in japan's like they got their stuff together they're like we got this kit manga, we're turning it into a show. Okay, we have this we have this kit anime, we're turning it into a game. <laughs> and so it all goes, it just lines up perfectly, so you just be like, rake it in, you know? Cause like I think they did a similar thing with like Attack on Titan. I love those games, like so good. It's like, oh my god, I, I still wanna play them more. I, I love it, like it's it's still continuing, it just the same things that we mentioned but in our previous podcast about it, they just keep on getting better and better. Those same elements, you know, him being kind of like the old man daddy uh, of the group, you know, and, and being like what the team needs in a sense, you know. Like he has this knowledge too of all these aliens and or of all these kaijus. It's, it works out so great because it's not just like a, oh, I'm just going to use my kaiju. Because that was kind of Eden's thing, right? Which is like the only thing that kind of made him special was... His tenacity and his, and then he got the Titan. This guy has knowledge, you know, about these things. So he literally can be kind of useless, but then once he brings that in, it, it le kind of levels the playing like, field. Like there's so many battles he goes into where because he tells them what they need to do, mm -hmm. they Strategies. can do it strategy-wise mm -hmm. because if they didn't know that, they wouldn't have won. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. To the point where even though he still hasn't shown... His ability to kill kaiju well, they're like, well, you have to. You're you're not just a maybe. You're 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 part of the team. They now. make him an officer. Yeah, yeah you're an officer. Mm. You're, you're not just an intern now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a low level. He might even still low level officer. Okay, he's still got a lot to work himself up. But we'll see how it goes now. Mm. You know. That might boost him, boost him up, or it, it might make it worse. We'll see. I don't know. He might be like have to go on the run. Who knows? Mm. So, yeah, yeah it's, I almost suspect it's because he turns into a kaiju that his uh, suit ratio is so low. Yeah, maybe. I, I would think it would make him go, like, into 100% or higher or something. I don't know. But maybe only if he's in kaiju form. Yeah, only. Yeah. So, yeah, he's, like, trying to mask it, sort of. But I definitely, I, it's a must-see for me. I, it's yeah. a phenomenal anime. It's a must-see for me as well. Hey, there's agreement here. Excellent. <laughs> House of the Dragon Season 2. I think there's only been one episode out, right? Yeah, have you watched the first season? I did not watch the first season. My wife's like, we have to watch the first season. I was like, wife, the first season, the first episode of the second season is coming out. I don't have time for that. And I want to see the strength of 
the first episode of the second season without having to watch it and see as a as someone just jumping in how it does and she's like you're gonna be lost it's, it's you're gonna hate it and and I'm like, well, I'm probably going to hate it anyways just because I hated the ending to Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So I, I was very guarded coming in. I was like, I was like, F this. And there was a lot of it, too, that just felt like they were kind of just going through the motions of Game of Thrones. Like, they were just delivering their lines, and they felt like they were just bland. And, and like, the costumes, I won't say they look cheap. It looks expensive, but it just didn't... I don't know. There's just something about it that it didn't feel like it was capturing the same magic that the early Game of Thrones seasons did, or even early Game of Thrones, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but then it shifted. There's a point where that shifted. There was characters, they brought the emotion that weren't, they weren't before, or just actors that were, different actors were showing up and they were bringing emotion. I was like, it sucked me in really quick. Like, yeah, it was like, it wasn't until like maybe halfway or more than halfway through, but it sucked me in and I was like, oh, okay, this is... I still didn't know who we're supposed to be rooting for per se. I feel like there was a leaning, but it, it was like, but it was tough because even on the side of the people you think you're supposed to be rooting for, there's people on that side where you go like, this is not, you don't have good people on your side. Like Damon's not a good dude. I don't understand this love with, for, with, for bad dudes. I, <laughs> once, I, maybe it's just a stupid woman thing. Like, I gotta love the bad dude and make him good. I don't know what it is. Like, you, you realize who her husband is, right? Damon, who he is to her, right? I know. I, well, that's her uncle. That's her, right, which makes it worse, and it makes me more confused that I'm seeing women on TikTok being like, I love him, and I'm all for this. And I'm like, maybe you live in the South. I don't know. Um, um. So, because I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Because it's not just, like, one person. There's a lot of women that are like, I'm all for this, and I'm all for him. And I'm like... He's not a good dude. And I hated the king, whoever, like, the the king, uh, you know, I don't even remember his name because they all sound, at this point, they all sound the name. They're all Aris and Agon, and they're all, to me, the, that's another thing that I go, like, I'm over the Game of Thrones stuff where it's like, where they have to, like, oh, I'm introducing them every time they come into the room, and I have to, they are the... The, the andals of this, and, the, and I'm like, shut up. I don't want to hear that. Get on with the story. You know, this helps nothing. This, I, I've heard this spiel before. Shut up. Move on. Like, it was those well, things that annoyed me. I know that's part that in, of it, but... They did that in King's Landing a lot the first season. Right. And so we know. We know it. You don't need to keep doing it. You don't need to keep on... Especially if you're trying to separate yourself. Like... Let's move on from that. But it's the same you know? rules of society. So you gotta follow those rules of formality. Right. Well, I mean, stuff can happen off screen. You you can say like, oh, and just start. I mean, lots of times scenes just pick up. We're we're already past that. You know what I mean? Like it's like you don't show people just like, oh, well, this is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff they do. Like even my cousin explained to me the whole why the whole red wedding was so messed up is because in that world. When you feed somebody in your home, it is an absolute, like, they're your family. You know, like, it is like you, it's the, the once again, that thing. So when they did that, they or broke it. Did they explain you, that? You no, they didn't the go into as it. Well, you didn't really go, they didn't go into that. The hound didn't like the people he was staying with, with, mm. the, with the girl. I can't remember her name anymore. The youngest daughter. I barely watched season one. But basically, <laughs> when he was invited by like a simple, like a farmer to eat, mm -hmm. even though he, you could tell he wasn't really liking the farmer, he was just like holding back like crazy and just being very, very respectful. And when you hear that line, when you hear about that, it makes sense why the hound is doing what he's doing, because that's just what you do if you're a guest. You you appreciate the host mm -hmm. for what they're doing for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And you try not, it's your duty to not get them uncomfortable if they're doing that favor for you. But getting back to it, I, I ended up getting sucked in by the end. I'm willing to give it a chance. I'm willing to continue watching. I feel because as a person who was guarded and not even so much guarded as just like anti got that you did enough to make me go, okay, I'll watch your next episode. I'll, I'll, this this wasn't a bad episode. I won't say it was the best, but and I could be nitpicky because there were things like her coming off the dragon where you could tell like there's ridges in the dragon's wing. 
she didn't ridge slide down. She slid down like she was coming off a slide you know, or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could be nitpicky, and that is nitpicky. You know, there are things that I can go like, oh, well, this looked cheap, and, and I don't like this. Yeah, that's nitpicky stuff. You know what I mean? But overall, I can say, like, it was a pretty solid episode. That it's at least worth checking out at the least. You know, at the least. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then we can just talk about... You know, all this stuff with the characters. Yeah, and I love talking about this with stuff. my wife. I was like, oh, what, what's up with this and what's up with that? So it was great, like, conversating people with. Like, I missed that about Game of Thrones is just the weekly memes mm -hmm. and the talking to people and all that. That's I missed that. So it was nice to have that back as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's worth watching, but I, I feel House of Dragon is general... It does well in some places and other places. It's just lazy and sloppy. Mm -hmm. Like the first season, their whole setup for the premise for the Civil War we're getting ready to see was lazy and sloppy. The Civil War happened because there's a delirious old man who mistook who he was talking to. That's the premise of the whole Civil War that you see breaking out right now. Mm -hmm. It's a delirious old man. Yeah, I mean, even the king... The king, the, the other king, I don't know, the usurper king or whatever, whoever's... Because it's actually supposed to be Rhaenerys that she's supposed to be well, taking over, right? yes and no. So... So it depends on what you believe. So Rhaenyra, so the previous king, her Rhaenerys' father, said that she would be his heir and never changed that. But the way the royalty line goes is... She would be there if he didn't have any more kids after that. But he marries Rhaenerys' close friend and has kids with her. Yeah, his daughter's age. It's <laughs> yeah. not unheard of. She makes sense to be the one to take over because she has all the knowledge. In order for Game of Thrones to happen, she needs to take over. Or the knowledge that really bring, starts moving the show forward doesn't exist. Because basically, the only time he really shares a prophecy that's passed down through kings and queens is with Rhaenerys when she's younger. The prophecy of the one that's going to unite everyone. Which uh, was supposed to be Jon Snow, but you saw how that worked out. Yeah. So, And that's another thing. is It's like... I know what the end game is, so I'm not that invested. But I was saying the, the Usurper King... He seemed like a jerk at the council meeting, but then he was really good with the with the common folk. And so it was con it was conflicting to me because I was like, oh, he's a jerk off. And then he's good with the people. And I'm like, so is he or is he not a jerk off? Well then? You know what I mean? Like Well, he just doesn't he doesn't care. He really just doesn't care about what they're saying. He just wants to get them out of the room. So he's willing to just say, yeah, you can have your sheep. Go ahead. Well, it didn't mm -hmm. seem that way, though. It seemed like he was doing what's right and saying what's fair. But then it was his his hand that was like, no, we can't do that. Like, it, everything he said, like, yeah, 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 you can do that. You can have your stuff. Yeah, I mean, it did seem like he's trying to keep the peace and he doesn't he doesn't really want to hear their complaints. And he's like, he is trying to get them to go away. But it did seem like he cared and he was... Like, he was good with them, and then it was the hand that was, like, putting a kibosh yeah, on all grandpa. of that. So, yeah, which, I mean, I did recognize him. That's the lizard from uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what did we say? Was it, It's worth checking out? Yeah, it's worth checking it's out. It's worth checking out. Let's move on to My Adventures with Superman Season 2. It's not over yet. Like I said, I think we maybe have one more episode for this month, and then that's it. But it's been a really solid season. It's been coming out week by week, and I feel like the first season, I only got to, like, episode four, and I was like, okay, I'm bored. But then when I picked it back up and watched from, like, five on, it was an easy binge. Hmm. You, they're like, okay, they figured out what they were doing, and they did. They they were doing a good job. And then second season is, once again, it's been kind of slow build. I just feel like it's better as a binge. Like, mm -hmm. it's just better as a binge. Like, I've been watching it weekly because it's coming out weekly, but... I just feel like it would be way better as a binge, and I think it would be better as a binge. I feel like when you have really super strong episodes, it, that means, like, every episode's probably, like, a must-see. Because there's slow episodes, and, you know, it's up and down. I feel like overall, as the season's gonna go, it's gonna be a must-see, but, but, like, by episode, you know, depending on which episode, you know, it's kind of, like, up or down. So it could be a check-out or, or must-see, you know what I mean? But it's just better as a binge, and 
But yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm digging it. It's not like the best thing ever, but it is definitely really solid. So I think I'm gonna give an overall, like, just uh, check it out. It's definitely worth checking out. I'm enjoying it. Okay. So, and it's crazy that uh, the same guy that plays Huey plays voices Superman in this. <laughs> there was the Xbox showcase. So, and that looks really great. There's a uh, Codbo 6, Indiana Jones update, Gears of War E Day. Oh my god, mm, that, that looks, looks so like great. it could be good. Huh. Yes. See how it I mean, goes. I love Dom and Phoenix. How can you not want yeah, to return the only, for that? Mm -hmm. The only downside is they confirmed there will be no Lancer because the Lancer isn't invented yet. You have to use the retro Lancer. Right. Mm. Yeah, obviously. I mean, they might invent it during the game. I hope so. That would be better because the Lancer is like the best weapon in Gears of War. So, but yeah. Then there's Doom Dark Ages. That looked epic. Oh, it looks so sick. And that's supposed to be a prequel as well. Avowed, they showed more Avowed, which looks awesome. Diablo Quattro, Vessel of Hatred. I mean, I'm not a big Diablo guy, but... I mean, that, that trailer looked awesome. That's the thing is, when you just show a trailer, I go like, okay, that trailer looks awesome. Gameplay, I'm not into the gameplay of Diablo. I'm not a big fan of that. that I played Diablo 4 initially when it came out on, on PlayStation, mm -hmm. mind you. So, I mean, there could be a different experience. But, yeah. You know, it's definitely an, an interesting play loop. You're just looking for loot and stuff. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Adding, you know, adding more stuff to the game is always Yeah, good, I mean, so. if you're into it, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. You're Yeah. That's your thing. Then we have Flight Simulator 2024. I love Flight Simulator. I wish I could just play it all the time because it's just nice and calming uh, until I clap, crash into... Mount Kilimanjaro, but uh, <laughs> but it's still beautiful the whole time. I'm like, that's fine. I don't mind going out this way. <laughs> <laughs> and there's WoW, World of Warcraft, The War Within. If you're into WoW, there you go. Dragon Age, The Veil Guard, which I am disappointed that they changed the name because I was really loving the name Dreadwolf, and I was like, why, what, why do you have to change the name? Like, why did they change the story? I I'm curious why they had to change the name. Like, what was so essential that they had to change the name? Mm -hmm. But the, you could tell the trailer was focused on, that's the thing, is your team is guarding the veil. Like, they are the veil guard. Mm -hmm. And I love Inquisition. It looks like they're continuing from Quinquisition. And so I'm absolutely there and all for it and all about it. And it looks beautiful and awesome mm -hmm. and epic. Next was uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Oh, I'm, I'm continuing to love everything that I see about that as well because you have your samurai. You can play as a samurai and then you can play as like your ninja character. Mm -hmm. And that looks so awesome that you can switch, you know, and I don't know how, how exactly you can switch, but... I'm so for it, and the gameplay just looks so good. I also I'm interested of, about the story, too. Because yeah, I also like the idea of, the, of using Yasuke. Yes! Like this legendary figure that like I barely found out about a few years Did ago. Did you see the anime of him? Not yet, Oh, no. it's so good, but dude. He's, yeah. uh, the real-life Yasuke story is kind of boring. Hmm. You really have to add a lot of dramatic flair to get entertaining. Basically, he was basically just... Some uh, Japanese lord's uh, servant. Mm -hmm. And that's why you watch the anime, because then it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and epic and crazy. Yeah, I think it's a <laughs> and hopefully they, they continue with that in yeah. this. Not, not to that ridiculous degree, obviously, because it's Assassin's Creed, but still, yeah. yeah. Ninjas were women, most of them. And mm -hmm. so, like, that's going to be really cool how, that's, how they're going to play. And I love how Assassin's Creed always plays into this, like... How it is kind of like science, or it's like fiction history, sort of. Like, they play with it, but they do kind of inform you of the actual history along the way, too. So I love that. Agreed. And, uh, I mean, even, like, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which I've been playing too much, and that's why I didn't watch tons of stuff this month. <laughs> because there's history in that, too. I love reading all the scrolls and, and learning stuff. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. I feel like that looked awesome. Uh, Age of Mythology Retold, that, that's, if you're into those kinds of games, that looked great. Fable, I mean, I will say it looks awesome. I did want, like, a prequel sort of story or return to form, which is them doing, like, more fantasy than more and less, like, you know, rapiers and, and, and revolutionary times or, or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's, I, I like the, the, just go, just go into more fantasy, you know, I, I like that. But it still looks cool, so we'll see. Uh, Mixtape. Perfect Dark, which, oh my gosh, that looks so cool. It is Perfect Dark, like, oh my gosh. Yes, like, it it, it, it's, it looks so cool, the, the, the stuff that they're doing with it. Uh, Expedition 33, South of Midnight looked really epic and awesome and crazy and nuts. 
That looks really cool. Uh, Starlight Shattered Space. I still need to play that. I still need to play Starlight. I feel like I would love it just because I love Skyrim, but I think I would love it more if it was in space and in the future. So, uh, so yeah. State of Decay 3. That looks awesome. Uh, Wu Chang Fallen Feathers. That looks beautiful and awesome. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. That looks awesome. That looks so <laughs> sick. Uh, then Fallout 76 Skyline Valley, Life is Strange, double exposure, and I just hope it doesn't suck. Like, I just want it to be good. I, I mean, I'll be happy if it's mediocre. <laughs> and I just don't want them to ruin what's already been so good. Like, especially, like, like you already did the first one. Don't ruin it. But they're bringing know? back Max. Yeah. For so, that one. But I think it might be kind of going into some one of the comics type stuff, it seems like. It's um, a murder mystery where, uh, you... In one reality, this person gets killed, and so you're traveling between both realities to figure out who did it, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to figure it out because uh, in the reality that the person's still alive, there's still a killer on the loose that is going to start killing people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's really cool too because just because I've seen some of the stuff that they did in it, and it, it just. It, it, I, I just, I'm ready to turn back to it, but it seems like they are taking stuff like the whole universe thing that's definitely from the comics. Uh, sea of Thieves Season 13, uh, Adam Fall, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, Winterboro, Fragpunk, Mecha Break looks cool. That looks like Gundam. It looks like the egg, the Gundam game that you've always wanted. <laughs> like, it just looks so sick. Um, and then there's this other game, like, this is a smaller game, but it's called Yar Rising by Atari, and it reminds me of this game called Shadow complex which is of similar to the similar to uh metroid like mm -hmm. the old school metroid like that's what it looks like with like updated graphics oh so well i do want to say before i move on that is definitely a must see so i'm just hitting off the the, the high points definitely watch it because of course it's different than watching us i mean mm -hmm. we'll probably throw in some some things here and there yeah. but you want to watch that that it's definitely a must see especially if you're an xbox person and, and if you're just in the gaming period, like, you're going to want to watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to move into the Nintendo Direct. You have Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which you play as. And you play as Zelda. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 And this one you play. Cool. Yeah. So, and it looks like it looks like a throwback to old school It looks Zelda. like a cross between A Link Between World and Link's Awakening remake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's it looks great. It looks great. Uh, Metro Prime 4 Beyond. Oh my god. I've never even played a Prime game, but this looks awesome. It looks so sick. <laughs> so I, I'm all about it. Like, it looks so cool. Uh, Mario and Luigi Brothership, which is hilarious. That's and it looks like there's a lot of team stuff going on. Like, you have to have, like, this back and forth. So I'm really interested in checking that out because I'll probably get it and play it with the kiddos. And, and yes, yeah, it looks like a blast. Um, then Dragon Quest 3 HD... 2D remake, and then later is going to be a Dragon Quest 1 through 2 HD 2D remake as well. Uh, and then Donkey Kong Country Returns HD remake. Um, that looks beautiful. Uh, Super Mario Party Jamboree, and then a Marvel Capcom Fighting Collection, which has all kinds of them. And, oh my god, I can't wait to play like the arcade games and like the Punisher one, and I hope like they have the X-Men one too, so I'm all for that. That's another one that's definitely a must-see as well, especially if you're into nin Nintendo, you absolutely have to, but I think just across the board, because there's so much stuff, uh, probably definitely more if you're into Nintendo. Let's talk about our merch. Let's talk about our merch. I'm sporting uh, our Star Wars stuff, the Star Wars Talk Nerdy to Me, just plain, and then I got the shorts Talk Nerdy to Me. You can get that on our website. It's on sale with free shipping, probably going to continue to be because of the fact that Acolyte is continuing into the next month. A lot of this stuff is like prototype stuff, so it's upgraded, there's better versions on our actual website. And hey, if there's anything that you want customized to you, or you there anything you have any idea, just send it to us, and we'll do our best to do that and see what we can get away with. Because there's some stuff we can, some stuff we can't. <laughs> you know, we push the boundaries as much as we can. <laughs> yeah, I got my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Talk Nerdy to Me shirt, pretty awesome. I got the Halo web. The good Halo. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I like it. So, yeah. Uh, and if you want any of this stuff, just request it. If it's not on the website, just hit us up, and, and we'll make it available to you and, and hook you up. Cool? 
So for shoutouts, we really don't have much. Uh, it's because, um, well, I mean, all, MK Jekyll and Hyde is now at the top of that list because they're phenomenal. They reached 250 subs on their for their comics, for their online comics, and, and they're really cool and really awesome, and, and they do great stuff. I know they're a, a parent as well. And so it's, it's great conversing with them and just all their posts are great. The Pesky Gremlins, they have a new website and they have like new comics, web comics out too that look fun and enjoyable and, and they always help out with their stuff. Eric Lopez, that guy's always a G, like he's the best on, on Twitter mm -hmm. and retweeting our stuff as well as the podcast that never dies or what, what is it? The podcast that wouldn't die? The podcast that wouldn't yeah, die. Yeah, the podcast yes. that wouldn't die. They're always awesome too. Check them all out. I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, just make sure to like and subscribe. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it nerdy, y'all.